So hi, Micro Hunter here, and today I would like to talk about uh, I microscope eyepieces. Um, and as a matter of fact, I've got uh, two questions here that I would like uh, to share with you, and then later on, I'm going to dive into the details. So let's uh, start. I was wondering, how often do you need to clean your eyepieces? And the second question, could you do a video demonstration of the various types of eyepieces in terms of their glass element construction and dismantling for cleaning the inner sides of the elements. I found some dirt inside the barrel of my eyepiece between the two glass elements, but I'm not confident about unscrewing the barrel in fear of getting the elements around the wrong way when reconstructing them. In the event, one falls out before I get a chance of seeing which way they were put in. My fingers aren't the most nimblest of fingers, I admit, and these are small elements. It's delicate work. Thanks. Thank you for the questions. As a matter of fact, uh, yes, this happened to me. I once took apart an eyepiece and it fell apart. Um, and I had indeed uh, initially some problems uh, finding the correct orientation again. Um, actually, it's not difficult. Uh, and in this video, I would like uh, to talk um, about this. And of course, uh, also about uh, a little bit, uh, some ideas about cleaning the eyepieces. First of all, first question, how often should you clean your eyepieces? Well, only as often as necessary. Um, generally, um, I don't clean them very often. I All I do is, is I kind of uh, blow away the dust that has accumulated on the eyepieces. Sometimes it might be necessary to remove also a little bit the grease from the eyelashes, but I am rarely doing that and generally removing the dust has been enough uh, right now. The insides I rarely clean um, and actually I never clean with alcohol because uh, this is not a place where normally you would find grease, but using a you know, compressed air, this is actually also something that one might do to remove the dust from inside of the eyepieces. So, but now to the other question about the disassembling of the eyepieces um, and then uh, basically putting it back together. And in order to explain this, I would like to give you a little bit of a more background information and a more comprehensive treatment of eyepieces. And that's uh, what I would like to do first. Well, let's have a look at the different uh, types of eyepieces. I categorized them into three groups. Those three here, these are telescope eyepieces. Those three here are eyepieces for stereo microscopes and the compound microscope eyepieces are here in front. Now let's have a look at some of the similarities and differences. Now one of the biggest differences is, is that the barrel diameter is different. So for example here in the telescope eyepiece this is a one and a one quarter inch and uh, over here 0 0.95 inch diameter. So usually those smaller ones are used for in children's uh, telescopes uh, and introductory telescopes and these are the standard ones. There are even larger ones. I think there are also two inch uh, di uh, diameter um, eyepieces for telescopes. These are huge, okay? Um, now these here um, for the stereo microscope, there are also two different standards, uh, but they're not the same as the ones from for telescopes. This one over here has a 30 millimeters diameter you can actually measure this out uh, by using a caliper, okay? So it's uh, 30 millimeters. And this one here, a little bit less of 26 millimeters, okay? And um, the compound microscope eyepieces here in front, they have 23 millimeters um, of a barrel diameter, okay? Um, so basically this already shows us that those eyepieces cannot be interchanged with each other. Um, another thing that I want to mention now is, is the different way of designating them. Designating them here, for example, the telescope eyepiece has 25 millimeters written on it. And here, this one over here has 16 millimeters um, for the compound microscope. Um, the 25 millimeters here in the telescope eyepiece refers to the focal distance. And here, the 16 millimeters refers uh, to the so-called the field number, which is the diameter um, of the aperture of the diaphragm here. And uh, this actually um, yeah, tells you something about how much of the specimen you are able to see. So basically, um, only a small, yeah, or, or larger. Oh. <laughs> uh, either you're able to see um, less of the specimen or more. Okay, so this is kind of the um, uh, the, the, the difference here. Um, so it actually means something different. The WF here stands for wide field. And now I see, I don't know why they actually wrote this on because 16 millimeters is not a wide field eyepiece. 18 millimeters is standard. And everything more than 18 millimeters um, is actually um, considered wide field. So this one over here does not uh, have anything written on it, uh, but it's 18 millimeters because I measured this out in here. Okay, I'm just saying this that uh, to to clarify that uh, the 
numbering system of course is is different okay so um one of the things that uh, is important now is is uh, also um concerning the so called the eye relief um, and uh, you might uh, see that some of them have um, either a, a letter designation here the w means wide field h for high eye point it means a large uh, um, eye relief and this means that your eye can be further away from the front from the eye lens and k means it's a compensating eye piece this means it corrects the remaining optical errors uh, from the objective and uh, some microscope eye pieces they don't use letters but they indicate the high eye point with uh, glasses here okay the, the pair of glasses and uh, this means that uh, when you're able to when you've, you've got this cup here the rubber cup and you can flip this back and now you're able to look uh, through the eyepiece using glasses i'm just going to take mine off here okay um, and you can rest them um, on the eyepiece here and then this uh, gives you just the right uh, distance uh, to the eye um, if you use uh, those eyepieces without glasses then of course you have to um, put it out and here uh, these eyepieces here they have an extensible front part look yeah? Um, and uh, so this one can now be used without glasses and with glasses you just push it in just be careful um, because what I realized is uh, later is uh, I've always been resting my glasses here on the front part of the eyepiece and uh, this actually caused uh, some scratches here on my eye eyeglasses okay just be careful when you do that um, over here this one also has an extensible front part and uh, yeah so why am I telling you this to you? Because uh, when cleaning eyepieces um, and uh, when the eyepieces do not have a large eye relief, then um, you will your eyelashes will be touching the eye lens here. Okay, and this means that the uh, front lens here becomes covered in grease, and uh, then any dust that is on here will all tend to stick much better. No, try to remove uh, the dust using a yeah. <laughs> dust floor yeah. uh, like this however i found that uh, in very often the dust will tend to stick quite well and it's because of the grease so in this case i recommend that you kind of use a, a, a brush and lightly uh, brush it away um every now and then you might uh, it might be necessary to also remove the grease a little bit in this case you have to use a cotton swab that you dip into a little bit of alcohol not too much alcohol otherwise the alcohol is going to run in, into the cracks here and you don't want that and then using a rotating manner you want to then remove uh, yeah, the, the grease i think it's it's not necessary really because uh, most of the time it won't it will only be dust that is uh, collecting here so um, occasionally you do need to disassemble um, an eyepiece because sometimes uh, some dust might find its way into the eyepiece itself. I mean, there are two lens elements in here and this uh, can happen when, for example, the temperature changes. And then when the eyepiece, for example, cools down, then also it will, the air inside will, uh, yeah, become less dense and it will draw air in and maybe over the years this way also some dust is able to find its way into the eyepiece and I don't think that this is a very realistic possibility but it can happen um, so uh, what you have to do then is you have to disassemble it and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a printout um, of two different eyepiece designs because you want to make sure that you put it back correctly again so I'm going to move all of those lenses back um, this one obviously called the Ramsden design and the Huygens design. Um, in both cases, you use plano convex uh, lenses. So this means that they're flat on one side and curved on the other side. And in this, in the Ramsden design, uh, the curved surfaces are pointing towards each other. And in the Huygens designs, they're all pointing um, downwards. Uh, the second difference is, is that the diaphragm, which is the opening, is uh, on different positions here. Here the diaphragm is um, down here and here the diaphragm is uh, between the two lenses. So both of these uh, characteristics, the orientation of the lenses and the position of the diaphragm can help you identify which type of eyepiece you have. Uh, because uh, if you disassemble the eyepiece, you want to make sure that the lenses are inserted back into the correct um, orientation again. The question is now, why are there two lenses in the first place? Well, uh, the thing is, is because any optical aberrations that one lens makes will be cancelled out by the second lens. So, and the diaphragm, that is also the place uh, where the objective um, will actually project the intermediate image. Okay, so... Um, 
And uh, yeah, so let's have a look at uh, both of these designs now in real life. Um, and I'm going to show you this one over here. Um, yeah, let's have a look at this one. That's the one from the stereo microscope. And if you turn it around, um, I don't know if you're able to see this, um, but it is slightly curved. This is very clearly um, the Huygens design. Oh, I bumped it again. Okay, so this one is, is this one over here. And uh, I'm going to now um, unscrew it uh, to show you now the position of the diaphragm. Okay, so let's uh, open this up. Let's put this. Let's put it back again like this. Maybe not a good idea to store it like this because then dust is able to actually go in. Okay, and uh, if you look at this here, here, this here is the diaphragm. Okay, um, and uh, this uh, essentially determines now also the the field number in the field yeah, uh, of view. And this means there is no yeah. And this means that there is over here is of course uh, yeah the lens. Okay, so again, if you if we put them next to each other, yeah, yeah, the diaphragm here is this one over here, and the lens down here is this one over here, and the eye lens, of course, is the one here on top. And this basically means that um, those uh, the inside um, of the lens is now um, also accessible, and uh, then you can use uh, yeah something like this here uh, to also remove uh, any dust. Um, yeah, I would say we just uh, close it again to make sure that uh, no dust is able to enter. So that is uh, one type of design. Now let's have a look at the other one. Okay, if you look here very carefully, uh, it's a little bit difficult to see uh, because the diaphragm is quite large, but here in the 25 times it's much, yeah, you can see that uh, the lens does not cover uh, the full diameter here. Okay. Or um, over here as well. Here you can see it quite nicely. The diaphragm, yeah, is is much, uh, yeah, much larger here. And when you open up this one over here, for example, then it is um, on the inside. It's uh, curved uh, towards the inside, yeah. And the other lens up here is flat on the top and also curved towards the inside. Okay, and there is uh, no diaphragm in between because the diaphragm is actually uh, this part here on the outside. And this is also the place where you can put a reticle, for example, a reticle or a pointer. Um, it can be um, inserted right here um, as well. But I'm going to now show you uh, the other one over here. Um, you know, some of them cannot be opened. Yeah? Then you need special tools uh, to open them. Yeah? Um, and uh, this one over here, for example, when I open this here. Yeah? Then you can open this one over here. Then you can see actually that uh, both lenses are now uh, yeah, in here. And over here, this is just the diaphragm and there is uh, no lens here. Okay. Yeah, so this one is, uh, is a so-called a Ramsden design. Yeah. So I'll uh, close this again. Okay, um, and uh, if you now do have to open up uh, yeah, and, and uh, remove the individual lenses here, then you need a special tool. Now, I'm not going to do that. I uh, just want to illustrate this to you. I'm just going to use the caliper here. Is you need to actually yeah, insert this here right on the side yeah, yeah, into those little notches and then rotate it and, and, and open it up. I'm not going to do this because I do not want to damage uh, and scratch uh, the eyepieces. But there should also not be a reason to actually open it because uh, in most cases there should not be any dirt in there anyway yeah? because this one is, is closed uh, completely. Yeah, so this last but not least, I do want to show you something. Um, when you have, uh, let's uh, use this eyepiece over here, let's unscrew it a little bit here, not completely, and then you can shake it and look, listen. Okay, um, so when you unscrew it here, then this basically means that in this case that the lenses uh, also become detached and when they fall out, then you have to know into which orientation to put them back. And of course, um, other eyepieces, this is not the case. Okay, you shake it and, and there is, yeah, and the lenses are still held in place because they have, uh, yeah, they're connected differently. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, for the sake of <laughs> interest, I'm just going to completely take it apart. Okay, and here you, you got, here we go. Okay. Okay, now it flipped out and I don't know into which direction it should go back, but I know that this one here is, because this one in here is uh, the diaphragm, I know that this one over here must be the Ramsden design, the one over here, okay? So this means the curved surface has to point uh, upwards, okay? And the reason, yeah, so it's got to be in it like this, yeah? I'm going to just put it here on, 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 yeah, on, on the side because it's held in place. There is this other cylinder in here which holds in place uh, the other lens. 
okay? So especially the, the, the cheaper IP system have this type of uh, yeah, design. So flat surface uh, yeah, towards the eye. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's now basically where we have to play around a little bit and flat surface towards the eye, then the cylinder and the round surface also pointing upwards. And then I can close it again. So, um, yeah, as, as I mentioned, especially the low cost eyepieces, uh, yeah, are designed in such a way, the slightly better ones, you can easily take it apart because the lenses are held in place uh, separately anyway yep. by a ring that you have to um, unscrew using uh, certain tools, okay? Yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, that's enough uh, for right now. Yeah, and I think I'll just put everything back together again. And that's it. Well, there are, of course, uh, also other types of eyepiece uh, lens configurations. The Kellner type eyepieces, for example, what they have is that the, the eye lens is a doublet lens, a concave and a convex uh, lens, and they are cemented together. Uh, the glass must be of different refractive index then, of course, and this has certain advantages. This gives you a wider field of view and also higher eye distance. Um, and so there are certain advantages here. And then there's those compensating eyepieces, like the ones that I have over here, uh, they're even more complex and uh, probably contain even more lens elements. Well, I think, uh, I hope that this uh, kind of answered most of the questions. Uh, do leave your comments behind. Um, I would also like to invite you now to uh, subscribe uh, to a newsletter that I'm starting uh, right now. Um, um, where I'm going to give you some follow-up information on some of the videos um, and also um, an overview of, of all of the videos that I've published in the previous month. Um, you can, of course, always unsubscribe if you don't like uh, to receive the newsletter anymore. A big thank you, of course, also to all my patrons and supporters. And yes, I wish you uh, all the best. Happy micro hunting as always. Uh, do consider subscribing to the channel if you like these videos. Bye-bye. See you around next time.